someone approached Jesus and said, Teacher, what good must I do to obtain eternal life? Jesus answered him, What do you ask me about the good? There is only one good who is good. If you wish to enter into life, give the commandments. He asked him, Which ones? And Jesus replied, You should not kill. You should not commit adultery. You should not steal. You should not bear false witness. Honor your father and your mother, and you shall love your neighbors as yourself. The young man said to him, All of this I have observed. What do I still lack? Jesus said to him, If you wish to be perfect, go. Sell what you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When the young man heard this statement, he went away sad, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Amen, I say to you, it will be hard for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again I say to you, it is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. When the disciples heard this, they were greatly astonished and said, Who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For men this is impossible, but for God all things are possible. The Gospel of the Lord. As always, it is necessary to go in order when meditating on the Gospel. The first teaching to remember is that not everyone goes to heaven. The idea that in heaven they are all there together and mixed up, Mother Teresa, together with the Stalin and Lenin and Hitler, well, God's mercy is infinite, but that is risky. The Lord clearly says, to go to heaven, you have to keep the commandments. He is the one who saved us. His blood is redempted. But if you have not kept the commandments, that is, if you are not in God's grace, at least at the hour of your death, then you will not go to heaven. It is as simple as that. And it is as clear as what the Lord has just said in this text. To go to heaven, because that is the question. What good do I have to do to go? To obtain eternal life? To go to heaven, you don't have to kill. You don't have to steal. You don't have to lie. You have to be faithful to your marriage, promises, or consecrated vows. To go to heaven, you have to keep the commandments. Everything else, everything else they said is a lie. It is going against the teachings of Jesus Christ. However, this is not the main theme of this gospel. The main topic is vocation, this virgin, which is one told by St. Matthew. It does not appear so clearly that he is a rich young man, which is how it is presented in another of the Gospels. I think it is the old young people are rich. Well, it is an exaggerated statement that is not true. I believe the old young people are rich. Maybe many are poor because they have no money, but all young people are rich. A young person has, well, he has health. There are some who do not, a few, but some do not have health. He has a life ahead of him, and it is a good thing that maybe he doesn't have much health. Maybe he doesn't have many prospects, but there is something that they have. If not all young people, I believe, all of them, almost all of them have plans. They have plans. As time goes by, your plans are reduced. You no longer make longer term plans. You no longer make life projects. You are satisfied with making short or medium term plans. Or almost with living in the present moment. The young person has plans. He plans, for example, to get married. He plans to study, to have a career. Not all, but many plan trouble, freedom, success, 
money. There are those who plan sex or entertainment. They have plans. And it is much more difficult to give up plans, dreams, than to give up realities, because dreams are always wonderful. I'm going to get married. This is to be going fantastic. I'm going to marry a great girl or a wonderful guy. Well, how wonderful. I am going to have children. They are all going to be blonde with blue eyes, even though I am brown. It doesn't matter, all blonde hair and blue eyes. Or it's a wonderful day, such handsome, smart, strong, intelligent, brilliant boys, all ministers or engineers, plant, plant. I'm going to have a career. I'm going to be number one in my career. I'm going to get seven Nobel Prizes. Well, I'm going to be able to enjoy life, trouble, sex, dope and rock and roll, and plants, plants, plants. Renouncing plants is more difficult than renouncing realities. And that is precisely what the Lord asked of us. He asked us to give up our plans in order to accept His plans. He asked us to give up our projects, which are often vain, in order to accept His projects. Lord, what do you want from me? What do you want from me? Not what do I want from me, but what do you want from me? Because if I believed in you, I know that you love me and I know that what you ask of me is the best for me. If we go back to the beginning of this expert, perhaps there we can discover where the root of the problem lies. This rich young man, well, good boy, a practicing believer in the Jewish religion, who himself says that there are things he has done all along, that is, he has kept the commandments. A boy, fine, good. But the question he asks is not the right question, or rather, the question he asks reveals what is in the heart he asks. Teacher, what do I good do I have to do to obtain eternal life? What is he asking? He's asking for himself. He's asking something that he is interested in. He could have asked the question in another way. Teacher, what good deed? must I do to please God? The answer, no doubt, could have been the same from Jesus, but his answer to Jesus could not have been the same. Was the rich commandment keeping, etc., young rich man, not interested in God? He was interested in himself. He wanted it, his salvation, and if he could buy salvation at a price he wasn't going to pay more for salvation. God does not appear anywhere. It seems to us to be a God-loving motivation. It looks like a selfish motivation, a good selfish motivation in the sense that he wanted to go to heaven is not bad. But in the end it's a self-motivation. A Catholic can ask Jesus, God, what do I have to do to be saved? He must first ask, what do I have to do to please you? Lord, what do I have to do to make you pleased with me? Because I know there will be salvation on earth. What do I have to do, Lord, to please you? That is the question. And to the rich man, riches, plans, and projects, perhaps short of money, the Lord searched the rich young man. How do you want to please me? Go on, search your projects and start to fulfill mine, the ones I have for you which are better. But if you are thinking of yourself, all you give is excuses, excuses of bad prayers. Because you will say, no, I promise you that I will not enter the seminary, but I promise you, I promise you that I will do everything very well and that I will be a magnificent light man. And then it turns out, then you stop going to Mass soon after, 
and the Lujolite is not exactly very honest, at least many of them. Let us ask the Lord this question. Lord, what do I have to do to please you? What do I have to do to give you glory? What do I have to thank you for all that you have given me? Let us listen to the answer and try to fulfill it. Amen.